I have been trading forex markets for over six years and I have figured out a thing or two about what actually works. So in today's video, I'm going to save you years of trial and error by simply exposing the exact same trading strategy that I use every single day to make a living trading full time. So this trading strategy is all about the most basic principles we as traders learned at the beginning of our trading path, which is aligning multiple time frames and using a mix of technical tools to pinpoint the best trade opportunities. All right, so my trading strategy revolves around three main pillars, which are multi time frame analysis, marking key market zones, and applying pivot points while also keeping an eye on the commitment of a trader's report. So the first thing on the list is multi time frame analysis. And the idea here is to ensure that the market trend is consistent across multiple time frames, such as monthly, weekly, daily and the four hour or even one hour charts. And typically trends on the higher time frames have a greater impact on price movements. So trading in the same direction as the trends actually gives us a significant edge. For example, I mainly trade forex with moving averages of 20, 50 and 200. So if the price is above the moving averages on all these time frames, it is a very strong indication of a bullish trend. And of course, the opposite is for a bearish market. Next, we need to identify and mark key zones on our charts, which actually involves focusing on support and resistance areas and drawing relevant trend lines. Support and resistance zones are crucial because they simply represent areas where the price in the market has historically had trouble moving above the resistance or breaking below the support. And when I trade, I typically stick with two resistance zones, which would be one on the higher time frame such as monthly or weekly and the second resistance level on the daily or on the four hour chart. And I apply the same logic for a support because in my opinion, and that is simply based on my trading experience, four key levels is more than enough to see how the market is behaving and where the price could retrace if that's the case. And then of course, once we're done with support and resistance levels, drawing trend lines that connect the highs or lows of the price actually helps us visualize the overall trend direction and potential reversal points in the market, which in many cases could even give you a better risk to a ratio for your trade. So once that's done, the next thing I incorporate into my trading strategy is pivot points. The most frequent pivot points that I use for my trading strategy is R1, which stands for the first resistance level, then central pivot point and S1, which is support level number one. So if the price is above the central pivot pivot point, it means that the market and the overall price is generally bullish, meaning the buyers are in control. If it's below, it's bearish, you know, it's indicating that the sellers have the upper hand. So it's pretty much acts as a reference for the market bias. Now, I haven't seen many day traders or traders in general doing what I do with these levels, which is once I mark them on my chart, and let's say I see a trade opportunity to the upside, I then go ahead and measure the distance in pips from the current price to R1 level to see how much room there is for the price to move before hitting resistance. And let me tell you that this really helps me to set realistic price targets and manage my trades more effectively. And finally, when I'm done with the multi time frame analysis, the marking support and resistance levels and adding my pivot points, I finally check the commitment of traders report. Now this report shows the positions of big institutions in the market, specifically whether they are predominantly buying or selling a particular currency pair. So for example, if the COT report shows that the big institutions are heavily long on the currency pair, it suggests that they expect the price to rise, indicating a bullish sentiment in the market. And of course, on the other hand, if they are heavily short, it suggests they expect the price to fall, indicating a bearish market sentiment. So by understanding, the positions of these major players in the market actually gives me that additional confidence into my trading decisions and helps me align my trades with the broader market trends. So let's take a look at one of the most recent trades that we took. This will be the trade that was actually sent to the VP members and to my free signals group on the 24th of June. And just 
before we move on to the example I will show you, this is another trade that we took with the VEP members. This is NZDJPY on the 4 hour chart. This is live trade going on. It reached take profit 2, which is around 60 pips. And at the moment, it still looks very bullish to reach my profit target 3, which would be around just this level over here, which would be 160 pips. So this is GBP JPY, and the first thing we will do is confirm that the market is trending in the same direction across multiple time frames, followed by checking the moving averages. And just to recap, I trade using 20, 50, and 200 period moving averages. So starting with a monthly chart that we are currently on, you can see that the price is trending upwards, the moving averages are below the price, and we can also see that the major resistance level just over here was also broken towards the upside. So moving on to the weekly chart, we can also see a very similar market structure going on where the price consistently trades above the moving averages and actually making higher highs. Now this is the daily chart and we can once again confirm that the buyers are clearly controlling the market. There is a strong daily uptrend in place. If we just go like that, of course, we can adjust it like so. And we can also see that the 20 period moving average, which is this orange line over here, is acting as a dynamic support. So as you can see, we broke above that monthly resistance level and we carry on being bullish. Now, if we narrow to the four hour chart, you will see way more many things happening. But as you can see, we have the three main pivot points applied. So the top one is the resistance one, then we have central pivot point and S1 just right at the bottom. And as you can see, once the price broke above the central pivot point, it trended towards the upside. There was a retracement back to the central pivot point, but then it continued to move up. And as I mentioned before, if we would go ahead and measure the pip distance from the current price, so just around this level to the next pivot point, which in this scenario was a buy trade opportunity, there is still around 179 pip move before it finds resistance. And as you can see so far, everything aligns well. We have broken into the higher time frame resistance zone. There is a decent space for the price movement to make a profitable trade. And the moving averages are trending in the same direction across different time frames. So the last step is checking the COT report. Now I will try to explain it as simply as I possibly can, but this is the COT report and this is how it looks like. So for this particular trade, both the GBP and JPY were being sold off heavily by the big institutions. Because if we can take a look just at this line, so Japanese yen against the US dollar, as you can see, the decreasing numbers from 132k to 138k and even to 147k they indicate that the large traders are increasingly selling off their positions in the Japanese yen, which was also happening uh, to the great British pound. But in this case, it was from 52k to 47 Okay. Also, I checked the economic calendar. So considering what's been happening with the Japanese yen, clearly GBP has an upper hand. So let's go back to the trading view. And this is where I enter my trade. So my entry was at 201.950. Now my stop loss is always covered by the moving averages. But in this case, it was also backed up by this support zone just over here. I set my stop loss of 80 pips and I target 100 and 60 pips as a final profit target, which gives me a 1 to 2 risk to a ratio, which in this case, as you can see, it closely aligned with the monthly pivot point. Now, if we then go ahead and play this trade out, we will definitely see how beautifully it followed the overall market trend. So if you go ahead and place it, and you know, it continued to actually making those beautiful higher highs and eventually it reached my profit target of 160 pips. So as you can see, it beautifully moving towards the upside and reaching my profit target just like so 
on Friday 2 a.m. in the morning. Now, I'm not a dark magician who wins all the time and sometimes the market throws that Uno reverse card on me, but I do my absolute best to take care of my community members and spend time analyzing the trades. But we still managed to consistently achieve over 1,000 pips per month using this exact same trading strategy. So if you want to become a VP member or simply join my free Forex Signals group, you will find all the links in my description box down below because you can also check out my weekly and monthly performance results right in there. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to leave me a like, comment down below, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!